Hey, a pleasant good day. We have our fan and friends. This is going to be the latest edition of the Ghostly Take as we check in on Adam Glendening, deservedly so, winning the PSECU Player of the Week, as well as Morgan Frost comes back down to provide more of an offensive spark, obviously, and also has played immensely well on both ends of the puck. Um, Tony Androkas and I even talked about that when I was at the one game at the AHL level. Don't know why he's necessarily back down. He got complimented um, last week, earlier in the week, then got benched to be sent back down. Go figure. Moody's back down to work on his craft, and he's going to be a great guy to have back in the lineup for the Phantoms as they continue to play tomorrow, which will be against the Providence Bruins. But before we get into that, let's get into just how great Adam Glendening had of a week. Unfortunately, the Phantoms fell, obviously, in two games. They got an OT point. They were not able to get a OT point even in the second game, though, as they fell in both 2-1, to one, one an OT to get an OT point against the Cleveland Monsters, and then one. Not in overtime. But Adam Glendening had the shootout winner against Wilkesbury. Very nice off the post goal. Assists on Shusko's goal to start the comeback. That was a very nice pass down to Maxime Shusko. And then tied for the AHL lead among D-men's, D-men with three game winning goals and two shootout goals. He's always been a great point producer on the back end at the AHL level. And that has continued this year for Adam Glendening deservedly so winning the PSECU Player of the Week. And also, <clears throat> somebody uh, we have to continue to shout out um, for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms since he started to play very well there in, uh, recently uh, is Kirill Ustamenko. Unfortunately, he lost an OT, wasn't able to get another victory again, but he could have deserved it in that one. And then Pat Nagel played amazingly in the second game on Saturday against Cleveland, where he really deserved a victory, and the Phantoms just, their offense has gone stalled, and that's really the um topic of this ghostly take. Even in the game against Wilkesbury, it's not like they scored immensely well. They were just able to get it to a shootout, and the third goal was because of the shootout uh, win, giving them the extra goal, of course. So the Phantoms have been very, very stalled on offense recently. The last time they got over three goals was back when they beat Hersey 6-3 on the 11th of February. So the topic of this goes to take really the Phantoms have to get their offense going again. Otherwise, yes, they have the very good goaltending, especially when Felix Samson comes back. You have the better goaltending. Melkoff was good when he was in as well. So they have the very good goaltending, but the goaltending can only do so much. And that was proven this past weekend against the Monsters, who weren't even that great of a team, where they were able to beat Karos Menko when he was able to make some key saves when needed, and then they lost an OT when they left someone open there, and he couldn't do anything, and then obviously on Saturday, uh, Nagel gets peppered, plays really well, but the Phantoms can't back him up with enough offense, and the same goes against Springfield Thunderbirds, they were able to score one, score two against Utica, they were able to beat Hershey 3-2, to two, playing a good defensive game in that one, uh, so that was a very nice one after they lost 3-2 to two to Wilkesbury, but it's about the offense. The offense has only been able to get at most the three goals of late. And when needed the most to play teams that playing against teams like the Monsters that you really want to take advantage of after you were able to beat the Hersheys of the world, play the Comets well, even in losing fashion, and then beat Wilkesbury in a very good game, you weren't able to take advantage of the Cleveland Monsters because the offense stalled too much and it wasn't able to get going. The Phantoms are really going to need their offense to pick up because the Providence Bruins Steele and I talk about in the current edition of the JV Steele Show are second in our division. They are a very good team this year at 24-14-3-3. And, and they're a team that are going to bring it on both ends of the puck and obviously have very good goaltending. So all those things put together, the Phantoms are going to need to have a fantastic uh, performance tomorrow in order to get that done with the way they've been playing this year. I mean, Troy Grosnick's been great in that. Kaiser's a good young goaltender. So, I mean, th- th- they're a very good team, obviously. And... I talked about it. We, I'm not going to go fully into them, but I talked about it on the JB and Steel Show if you want to check it out, how we uh, talked about the top contenders in the AHL. But they're, they're a team that has been pretty consistent this year and is a very good two-way team that honestly is playing above their skates because if you look at their overall roster, you might have not projected them to be as squeaky clean consistent as they are this year, but they've been playing very well. So hats have to go off to them. But at the same time, our Phantoms have played a lot better <clears throat> In the 2022 calendar year, lately they've been struggling to get on offense, so I'm trying to see this perseverance get back again by the Phantoms that we saw after they had such a bad start to the season. We saw the get back to get them back in the playoff race. Now they're starting to fall a little bit again. Only, I think it's four or five points back now, but they're starting to fall a little bit, and that's because of their offense. It would be nice if they can get back into it 
a little bit more here, especially beating the uh, Providence Bruins, because then you have a really tough weekend against the Charlotte Checkers. So I would like to see the Phantoms. I think they would be sitting really pretty if they're able to take two or three from this week because they're playing three really solid teams. And the way that the Phantoms have been able to play goaltending-wise and even in some games, like I said, defensively when they were able to beat Wilkes-Barre and able to beat Hershey 3-2, to two, you can win games like that. You just have to be able to get to that third or fourth goal, and we haven't always been able to do that consistently enough. So hopefully the Phantoms are able to consistently play in, the, in net like they have been and play how they have against the um, Hershey Bears and against Wilkes-Barre defensively, but then they're able to get that third or get that fourth goal to put them over the hump because that's been a big issue against some of these teams, particularly the really good teams. We didn't see them get over the hump against Utica and Springfield, and they're playing those level of teams this week when it comes to the Charlotte Checkers. Not to the, that oomph degree, but right below those level of teams when it comes to the PR Bruins especially. And then when it comes to the Charlotte Checkers, they're a team that isn't to the degree of being that high of a colder contender, but they're a dark horse where I wouldn't really consider our fans a dark horse colder cup contender at this point. It's just nice to make the playoffs if we can squeak in there. But everybody have a great save and pleasant day. Please can subscribe down below to keep the channel growing to 215 by March 15th. Up above on the easy-to-use widget, let's go Phantoms. Let's try to get back to the winning ways and the goal-scoring ways. Peace out, everybody.